Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to today's webinar brought to you by sharedserviceslink.com and sponsored by Tibco Nimbus. Today we're going to be looking at a very important topic for shared services organizations that are keen on the idea of growing. So the title is quite a long one and it suggests that this is um, quite a, a large topic that we're going to be covering off. Um, and it's how to secure confidence from your customers so further shared services migration of process is painless and the new process is followed by all. I'm very pleased to say that we're looking specifically today at the fascinating BAE Systems story. So my name is Susie West and I am your host for today and I'm the founder and CEO at sharedserviceslink.com and our main presenter for today is David Bristow, who's the Finance Services Director at BAE Systems. And he's going to be joined by David Easterbrook, who's Global Consulting Director from TIBCO Nimbus. So just before I introduce um, and hand over to David, let's just talk a little bit about the context behind this webinar today. So increasingly what we're seeing is that retained finance within the organization is really doing a very small percentage of the finance function. We're now seeing that retained finance is, is really in the single digits as far as the percentages um, owned. So we have examples of companies owning 3 or 4% at a retained level, which really is the way forward for shared services organizations. Just to remind everybody that the, a way in which um, shared services really flourishes is to, to make sure that as much scale as possible is provided for the shared services organization. So really having kind of only 40% of the finance process within shared services, it suggests that you're not really leveraging the shared services model there. So the, the argument here is that retained finance really should be as small as possible and as really into the single digits in terms of a percentage if you can. However, this presents a challenge, convincing local finance directors to relinquish each year more and more of their processes and, and um, more and more of um, the activities within the process, as we all know, can be a struggle. And uh, some of the challenges can be that it's it's hard to get finance directors to hand over that control and that's largely because they might be lacking in trust or they might be lacking in confidence in maybe your ability to get the job done better than them or their confidence in the new process. So that's really what we're going to be digging into here. How can you provide them with that confidence so that, so that they are more than happy to hand over more and more of their work to the shared services organization? And not only that, that they are so happy with the new process that they um, actually follow the new process themselves and also that they support the following of the new process. So that's absolutely key too. So just um, as you well know, you have a role to play in the, um, this webinar over the next 60 minutes, which is to really scratch your heads and think about the questions that you would like to have answered. Uh, pop those through to me, please, in the box which I've highlighted in, in red here. Get them to me nice and early, if you would. Um, and then the earlier you get them to me, the more chance it is that they will be asked uh, to David and, and to Dave. And remember to stay on uh, for the last 10 minutes of this webinar for the Q&A session. With all that in mind, then I would like to introduce David Bristow, Director of Finance Services at BAE Systems. Over to you, please, David. Thanks very much, Susie. Um, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Just to introduce myself, I'm David Bristow, Director of Finance Services within the UK part of BAE Systems PLC and within the shared services business. Uh, I've worked for the company for just over 15 years. Um, the last five and a half years, I've had the privilege of working in shared services, firstly as the finance director and more latterly as the director of finance services. Uh, as uh, Susie has alluded to in this webinar, I'll describe why we had in BA systems and still have the challenge of securing customer confidence, which is key to enabling us to transition activities into finance services and to be an effective finance shared service center. I'll then put the challenge into the context of BA systems. 
having set the context, I'll focus on how we came to choose how to as our tool of choice for process mapping and then describe how we deployed it. I'll conclude by reflecting on whether we achieved the outcomes we set out to achieve and where we're thinking of going next. So the challenge. In 2009-10, we started a journey of transition and transformation of the finance back office within BA Systems in the UK. Key to this journey was that there was no corporate mandate. This resulted in finance services needing to earn the right to be the provider of back office finance services for the UK businesses. This right would be earned through logical arguments around benefits and a focus on delivering our promises through performance. The key issue in this activity initially was convincing prospective customers, my FD colleagues, that finance services was a credible partner against the backdrop of them currently owning their financial data and teams and being accountable for their business's overall financial control environment. If we won the initial arguments, the next challenge was to migrate activity from multiple locations across the UK to our finance service centres. Within these locations, there are multiple businesses who have their own ERP systems and therefore sets of processes that work alongside their systems. Maintaining financial insurance integrity through any migration was going to be critical and I knew finance directors would be looking at any migrations to see whether they could trust finance services and have confidence in us. I was acutely aware that as well as finance directors as customers, there were many consumers of our services, external customers and suppliers, as well as over 30,000 potential employees. So against that backdrop, the potential impact of failure was not only the risk that finance services would fail to deliver incremental value to the company, but what you see at the bottom of this slide, customers not being paid, suppliers not being paid, time not being booked to contracts, employees being into incorrectly paid, and issues with statutory data and lack of compliance. So now a little context for the challenge. The next slide about BAE systems shows some key facts. BA Systems continues to build successfully on its position as one of the world's largest and most geographically diverse defense, aerospace and security companies. We operate across five home markets in the US, the UK, Australia, Saudi Arabia and India and employ over 88,000 people worldwide. The backdrop to our business currently, particularly in the UK and the US, is the pressure on government bu budgets and consequently defence spending. This means that the company is under huge pressure to become more efficient and agile to both support its government customers and also to win more export business. My next slide here shows the company structure. A couple of points to note here for context. Within each line of business there are a number of sub-businesses. So for example in the programs and support area both military air and information and maritime have three operating businesses within their line of business. A second point, in terms of geographic spread, programs and support is exclusively a UK business. Within the ink businesses, electronic systems has a UK business as does land and armaments. There's a small part, a UK part to Saudi Arabia and Detica is predominantly a UK business. The reason for drawing this out is that the finance services scope for which I and my team are responsible is predominantly UK centric. Across the UK there are currently approximately 35,000 employees and I couldn't actually begin to tell you the number of sites but it's well over 50. Again context for the challenge for finance services. And I just want to focus a little on the shared services business. Within shared services, there are a number of lines of service which fit broadly into two streams of operation. The business support services stream is what I think most of you would see as a traditional shared service. Within this business support stream sits finance services. The shared capabilities are where BA Systems has looked at its organization and considered that by joining together capability 
that is required at times by multiple businesses. We can get more effective and efficient ways of working and focus scarce expert resource on critical business issues. Shared Services was originally set up in 2002 and has evolved over the last 10 to 11 years. Originally, Shared Services did not have a finance service, which is quite unusual compared to a number of other companies. This was because the finance function at the time didn't believe it would create value. Again, a bit of context for my challenge of needing to secure and maintain customer confidence, particularly at the finance director level. I think it's always important to think about any activity in its strategic context. This slide includes an extract from the BA system strategy. As a defense and security company, supporting our customers in safeguarding their vital interests, which are predominantly national protection, is of absolute importance. Whilst we have much fantastic products, typhoons, submarines, Type 45 destroyers, cybersecurity products, to name but a few, the real value we add is through the people who work in the company. Engineers and technicians, manufacturing teams, supported by strong program managers and other functions. Obviously, while support of our customers is paramount, we're a business and therefore the need to drive value for shareholders through financial performance, being more competitive in order to win export business in challenging market conditions is also fundamental. The second part of this slide shows the finance services strategy. It clearly aligns to the BA system strategy with focus on how we in finance services help the company reduce costs by doing more for the UK businesses, thus driving economies of scale, by reducing the cost of what we do through operational excellence and ensuring the company is protected reputationally by maintaining a high level of financial assurance and control in all that we do. These items have to be achieved through the finance services teams. So improving the environment and making finance service a better place to work for my colleagues in, in my teams through the challenges and opportunities we give them is critical to our success. My mantra uh, for finance services is that every change that we make is subject to the challenge. How, does that, how is that going to reduce cost? How is it going to improve assurance? If these questions are not adequately answered, and obviously sometimes one is more important than the other depending on the change, we will not make the change. So moving to the scope of finance services, let me just explain this slide to you. Anything in white doesn't appear in the finance services catalogue. The items in the light blue um, mean that some of the sub-processes within these areas are in the service catalogue and some aren't. This is very deliberate because in these areas we see that the line of responsibility, some of those activities are right to be uh, retained within the line of business. The dark blue items, these we consider absolutely core and believe UK businesses should be taking these services from us. And finally the grey items, we don't see these items as core services, but they are in our service catalogue. And we firmly believe in finance services as value for our customers in the UK to take these services from us. There are a couple of points here which are relevant to the challenge I described earlier. I think you'll see from looking at this slide, the scope of our services is pretty extensive. As I said earlier, there is no mandate in finance services, we have to earn the right to provide services for our customers. And to put into context, currently within finance services, we have about 160 people in three main locations. Uh, in Glasgow, which is in South Wales, uh, we have our centre of excellence around order to cash and records report, compliance and control. In Preston, we have our centre of excellence around purchase to pay. And in Portsmouth, we provide a range of these services uh, for particular customer groupings. How have we done? Well, in 2007, there wasn't a finance services. As we sit here today, we probably have circa 50% penetration across our service catalogue across the UK businesses. But again, a key point for me to reiterate is businesses choose which service they take from us. So our service catalogue and, and what we present to our, business, our businesses 
can be quite different business by business. I thought it might be helpful to context what we do in terms of some volumes. So last year we processed nearly 219,000 purchase invoices worth 4.8 billion across 25,000 suppliers. We processed over 145,000 expense claims worth 56 million and raised sales invoices worth 1.4 billion. We completed over 17,000 reconciliations across four ERP systems and completed 51 sets of statutory accounts. Not on this slide, we're also responsible for time and attendance management for nearly 25,000 people. With this level of volume, the risk of error is pretty high. So having clearly documented processes and work instructions with clarity of control is critical. In late 2012 and through 2013, we are transitioning and have transitioned further activity, which will increase billing and accounts payable activity by over 50% for next year and expenses by 20%. It will also increase the amount of record to report activity we do. Our intention is always to drive economies of scale. So achieving these volumes with proportionately less headcount is always our objective. So hopefully the last few slides give you some context around BA systems, around shared services, and finance services. Its diversity and its challenges and enable you to see the context of why securing customer confidence is so important yet challenging, why migrating processes is so challenging but doing it effectively and efficiently so important, and why having transition work, ensuring we do not miss a heartbeat in terms of delivery to customers, suppliers and employees is so vital. Hopefully our requirement begins to become clear. But in the next section, I'll go into a little more detail around our requirements and our journey. As I've already described, there was nothing in 2007. A number of businesses within the UK had created their own mini finance back office functions. So between 2008 and 10, we started to move these teams into finance services to create a critical mass. By early 2010, we had a team of about 140 people across five main locations, all doing similar activities for different customers. Having created this critical mass, we needed to demonstrate the value finance services could bring. So we set about how we would take 20% of, of cost out of our organization against the backdrop of non-standard processes and variable performance. The decision was to create Glasgow and Preston as centers of excellence for parts of our service catalog. I should also say that Portsmouth joined the finance services team in late 2010. So we'd started on this journey and for good customer reasons uh, and because of the efficiency of the Portsmouth team, we decided to, to integrate the team organizationally but not to consider moving work. By early 2012, we had a single organization with reduced locations and achieve, achieved our cost saving objective uh, of achieving a 20% cost reduction. And we achieved this at a lower implementation cost than we had originally budgeted. Importantly, we had confidence that all of our processes in the locations where work was now being done had been fully documented and were under version control. Why did we have this confidence? Because we had invested time and a little bit of money in introducing and embedding how-to as an enabling technology. In terms of our journey going forward, Having controlled documentation is enabling us to identify process differences and therefore gives us ideas for continuous improvement, which is fundamental to our future success. As I said earlier, we have onboarded more activity this year and have plans to do more. A cornerstone of everything we do is process documentation and using how-to is fundamental to this. I'm now just going to hand back to Susie for a second uh, to take a bit of a poll. Thank you very much indeed, David. So coming up on your screen now, we just want to find out from you, please, where are you in your shared services journey? So have you just started out um, and you're in the design and implementation phase? Have you got through go live and you're now in the stabilization phase? Are you past stabilization? 
and now migrating more countries and more processes, um, or specifically more countries, are you migrating more processes and functions and now what you would say in the continuous improvement phase, are you doing one of the above and also working in the main with an outsourcer? So you please do, and if that is the case with you, please tick that you're one of the above and working in the main with an outsourcer and also just tick which stage you're at. So you can tick up to two boxes if you're working with an outsourcer as well. So only 39% of you have responded. Um, we like to get these response rates up to 70%, please. So if you haven't already done so, please tell us where you are in your shared services journey. Just starting out around the go live and stabilization, past stabilization and migrating more countries, migrating more processes and functions and continuous improvement, one of the above, and working in the main with an outsourcer. If you haven't already responded, please do so. Closing the poll in three, two, one. Thank you. We were at 73% of you responding. So thanks for that. Um, coming up on your screen now, you can see the results. Really interestingly, just shy of half of you are in the just starting out phase. So I have to say it's a um, great time for you to be engaging in this content because a lot of what David is sharing with you now, I'm sure he wished somebody had shared with him back in the uh, kind of 2007 or thereabouts when he was starting up and certainly over the last few years as well. Um, interestingly, only 8% 8, 8 of you are doing one of the above and in the main working with an outsourcer and 32% of you to a third of you pretty much in what you would say the kind of the continuous improvement phase. So interesting results. Back to you please, David. Thanks very much, Susie. And just to echo, yeah, that would have been really helpful on some of these thoughts as we were sort of plotting our way through our journey back in, uh, back in 2010. So given the journey I've, uh, I've described, um, how does the process visualization help the journey? Um, so given the journey I've described in the context of ensuring I secure customer confidence, clarity of process understanding is absolutely critical. We have found that transparency of processes through clear visualization has been really helpful. A journey is obviously meant moving work between sites. Unsurprisingly, lots of people have decided not to move with the work. It has therefore been critical to catch the knowledge of people leaving the business in a clear and concise way. Not only this, but being able to assess the impact of moving a process is fundamental. And process visualization and mapping obviously help this greatly. Then having captured the process, we can ensure that new staff understand and are trained using the process that has been captured from existing staff. This clearly complements the work shadowing visits that we undertake and ensures at the end of the process of transition there's a definitive record of activity. Having recorded the processes used, we're now able to analyze this data to identify best practice or duplication of activity and use as a basis for improvement knowing that we have accurate data of how our processes are run today. Another key advantage is that we do not have to run those horrible initial workshops of process mapping with brown paper on the walls where everyone is manually trying to think about what they do because we already have that documented so we can get straight to the heart of improvement and having had that data captured using a com common language. What we've also been able to do is visualize our financial controls. Our processes clearly show the control points and we're able to demonstrate these control points and how they're mapped to the company's mandated financial policies. In terms of the challenge of securing customer confidence, this is a major advantage. Not only this, but we're able to give customers access to our process maps and controls as well as internal and external audit. This has helped to create a very open and transparent working environment, again enabling confidence and also engagement for our teams. So with the need clear, now to the choice of technology. So if we look at our finance services requirements, why how to? BA Systems already used a, no used a number of process mapping tools across the company, Visio and Aris, Excel use, swim lane diagrams, all very popular, and I'm sure many of you have experience of them. When we looked at our choice, we had no experience of how to. It was clear we had a need, which I've described, 
but we needed to spend time ensuring we had a clear set of requirements, which you can see on this slide. Ease of use. We wanted everyone in finance services, not just the process or IT specialist, to be able to use and interact with our process maps. Online, shared and maintained easily. We wanted the team to use the process maps and work instructions on a day-to-day -day basis. We wanted to be, it to be the way we work, and therefore we needed to be able to update material easily whilst maintaining version control. Rapid deployment. We were on a journey and the train had left the station. We needed the tool to work for us and accelerate, not slow down our journey. We had limited resources, so needed a partner we could work easily with. Support understanding and standardization. We needed something which we could continue to develop and mature. A tool which supported our objectives of reducing costs and improving financial control, where we knew standardization would be key. So we needed something that enabled us to identify opportunities. And finally, a one-stop shop. We needed a complete and coherent picture of process control points into work instructions. So with requirements clear came the million dollar question. But before I answer that, for BA Systems and Finance Services, I think another poll question from Susie. Thank you very much, David. So again, coming up on your screen, what tool or tools and methodologies do you use today for process mapping? So um, please tick all that apply. Do you use Tipco Nimbus, Visio, Excel? Do you augment that with workshops and swim lanes, or any of those with, with workshops and swim lanes? Or is there an, another tool or methodology that you use to do your process mapping today? So please tick all that apply. 68% of you have responded. If you haven't already done so, please do so in closing the poll in three, two, one. So 75% of you responding there, so thank you for that. Okay, so what we can see coming up on the screen, 13% um, of you using TIBCO Nimbus. Hopefully after this particular webinar, um, that number will be significantly impact, impacted. 70% of you using Visio. Um, 35% Excel, just shy of 50% of you are doing the workshops and the swim lanes that David's been talking about um, and obviously talking about as a thing of the past and 38% of you coming in with other tools or methodologies. Back to you please David. Thanks Susie and I would say um, if I look at our and think back to our processes back in 2009-10, probably we were representative of that poll in terms of a mixture of Visio and, and, and swim lanes with a bit of Excel thrown in for good measure. Um, I'm sure most of you have uh, seen Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Well, I have to say, in our selection, we used all three of our lifelines. First of all, we asked the audience. This means we engage with the users, particularly during product demonstrations from various vendors. This helps us to further develop and test our requirements. It also helps us to assess the vendors, because it's not just the product you buy, it's the support you need after you've bought it that also counts. Secondly, we phoned a friend. We contacted a number of reference customers around the UK and abroad. These people had already answered the question, which product do I select? Some had spent months formally evaluating product, products, and fortunately for us, they were happy to share their results. After this, we started a formal procurement request for proposal process, which allowed us to take away two wrong answers and left us with a decision to make of two. Ultimately, we had to make a decision between two solutions which we could see would both meet our requirements. It was important for us not to get lost in large evaluation spreadsheets, but to take a step back. What was really key for us? And for us, having reflected, there was two key criteria, usability and supplier capability and relationship. I have to say two areas where Nimbus uh, scored high on points. However, we were aware, as BA Systems, we'd not used Nimbus before, but had deployed other, the other tool. I remember when the person running the process came to my office one evening, uh, at the time of making the decision, and sitting with him as we went through the decision. When I asked um, what his decision was, and it wasn't the tried and tested BA Systems traditional products used by engineering and IT in particular, 
I must admit, I sort of muttered to myself and thought very long and hard. But ultimately, we were convinced how to best met our needs and agreed to do what we thought was the right thing for, the part, for our part of the business. I can honestly say that was one of the best decisions I've made in my current role. I'm not saying that Nimbus is the best fit for everyone's requirements, but I strongly recommend engaging with end users and calling re reference customers to inform whatever decisions you have to make. So having m made our decision, we now move to deployment. I've described the requirement, how we decided to contract with Nimbus. The purpose of this slide is to demonstrate at a high level the initial deployment process and the time span by which we achieved that deployment. I would also add that How To was deployed at a time when we had announced that we were going to close several locations and were going through consultation processes with employees, which was creating significant uncertainty for those staff some of the staff involved in this project. However, it was absolutely necessary to ensure we could migrate work and associated processes effectively, and so deployment was essential over a short period of time. Without going through every step, I just want to highlight a couple of points. This project was all about engagement with the people who own and perform the processes. We needed their cooperation and understanding as the knowledge was with them. That is why we had a number of briefings to all the teams about why we were doing this project, what their role was, and how they needed to review and approve the content. Process mapping more than 280 processes is only part of the project, and we did that in about two months. Linking the process maps to over 230 controls and 330 work instructions takes a little more time and took us into the second half of the year. But we still achieved the whole of the project within a six-month time period. For me, this was a staggering achievement for the team, and to have them celebrating the tool by the end of the first stage is testament to them, the work and support from the Nimbus team. And just remember, this was at a time when people were being made aware that they might be losing their jobs. My previous experiences meant I was scared that this activity could take months and months, and I would still have little confidence. But with the right motivation, right communication, right schedule, right support from Nimbus, we achieved their schedule and hugely de-risked their overall transition activity. So what does a process diagram look like? I'm now going to go through a couple of slides which illustrate how to and how we use it. Unfortunately, a few screenshots do not really do justice to the product, but hopefully it will give you a flavor of the tool and how we've applied it in finance services. What you see before you is the top level process diagram from a customer perspective. It looks simple, but there's real skill in extracting process knowledge and making it easy to understand. The Nimbus consultants, I have to say, were brilliant at doing this by asking the right questions and facilitating workshops. Because the Nimbus team engaged so well with all the teams across all of the systems, they created and helped us create a common language, irrespective of location or system. The team of consultants were very dedicated, easy to do business with, and exceeded our expectations in how they captured the knowledge. When we started, my greatest worry was that I'd invested a lot in technology and would be left still with a very messy set of data, which was poorly governed and not owned and maintained by my teams. I have to say using Nimbus to support and train our teams has mitigated this risk, as they really know how to make uh, their, their product work and have in-depth knowledge of their tools from all of the projects that they've done. They know how to make it sustainable and well-governed, and they know, most importantly for me, how to transition that knowledge. I now have a team of competent authors within finance services who not only maintain our data, but create new content with confidence, knowing they can get a bit of support from Nimbus whenever they need a little help. The next slide shows the next level down for one of the elements from the process on the previous slides. It goes down to several le levels before it links to work instruction documents. You can see here clearly the inputs and outputs from each process step. If you look closely on step four, payroll information, there's a little pa paper clip. This denotes there's a work instruction which tells an individual how to execute that process step. 
Again, this allows the team to not only know there is a written procedure, but also helps identify where there are gaps in work instructions, which can be asset, assessed and then added to as necessary. For example, if you can see step six in the diagram, there's no work instruction for completing a VAT return because there's no paper clip. This can be challenged and an action put in place to correct it and clearly put a work instruction in place where one is needed. As I said earlier, in a four month period, we created over 280 of these diagrams and over 330 work instructions. You'll also note in the right hand corner, top right hand corner, a suggest a change link. So if someone thinks something is wrong or needs improving, they can click and suggest it. This can then be reviewed by the relevant process owner and amendments made as necessary. You can imagine that this process fully documented through my organization to ensure that I have confidence in what we do. Using this technology as we transition activity gives me confidence that knowledge is captured and documented, which I have to say certainly helps me sleep at night. As I mentioned earlier, our plan also includes linking controls to policies and processes. This also helps me sleep at night. In BA systems, we have a highly structured control environment. Our finance policies man manual mandates over 120 controls. And in addition to this, we have a risk-based approach to determine what further financial controls are necessary. The way we've implemented our control environment in finance services addresses a common problem in compliance. The policies and regulations often tell you what you need to comply with, but not prescriptive on how you can comply. That's why we created two registers, one for policy statements, the what, and one for business controls we use to comply, the how. Then using hyperlinks, we now have complete coverage of how we enforce compliance across all our processes. This diagram represents the mapping process behind our methodology. Here's what it looks like in Nimbus Control. On the left is our list of, list of finance policy statements. On the right is a sample list of business controls. For example, having a list of approved authorizers or a check for completeness. Ob obviously, there can be a many-to-many -many link, which is mapped through the tool, between the finance policy statements and the controls. Moving to the next slide, controls link to activity boxes. You'll notice the, the, the look of that activity box from what I showed you in the process diagrams before. You can see here a little red line and also a little tick box. These indicate that there's a control point associated with that particular process step. When someone hovers over the tick box, they can find the name of the control. And when they click on the tick box, a pop-up view of the control comes up. When you click on the tick box again, you see the high-level policy statement it aims to comply with. For me, this is incredibly powerful. Key to achieving customer confidence is the ability to know that we're in control whilst having this documentate. Whilst having this documentation doesn't mean that people do what the process or work instruction tells them. It provides structure and guidance. Because it's intuitive, people are able are more likely to use it. And because we engage teams in actually authoring the data with support from Nimbus, there's no doubt that they own the many of the processes and do use it. Not for today, but a person who led this implementation made a video. What was impressive for me about the video is the passion with which my people talked about how to. And this is con consistent with conversations I have across my team. Not only this, but some areas now organize our activity and use daily task lists, which are therefore linked to the process steps. Power for me is that I see how to alive and being used on a daily basis and people genuinely embracing it as part of the way we work. So having shown you how we implemented how to and some of the functionality, I hope you can see it looks and feels intuitive, which I believe is one of its greatest strengths. To demonstrate this further, I thought I'd show you one of our landing pages. This slide shows you a landing page or a point of entry for expenses. You can see, again, it's very user-friendly and has different options depending on whether you're an employee needing to use an expenses service, an improver, or an administrator. The screen gives you simple options. The step-by-step -step guides are essentially storyboards 
using the process and work instruction documentation already created. All of this is designed to help the user of our expensive service. I'll demonstrate this briefly on the next two slides. So the user has now clicked on the submitting my expense claim and is now presented with this screen. As you can see on the left hand side, the eight process sets. And this is shown as a process diagram on the right hand side. You will see the look in the field, the field is exactly the same as I've already shown you and shows where there are work instructions and control points. The user can now decide on which part of the overall process they need to understand. So let's assume they need to know how to create a new expense claim. By clicking on the paper clip, on this occasion they're offered two work instructions. One will tell them how to sign on to concur and the second will take them to a work instruction which will tell them how to create their claim. You'll also note at the bottom of the process diagram some further useful information. Creating these storyboards not only enables us to have ready-made training material, but also ensures users have easily accessible reference material. A further benefit of exploiting the technology in this way is that it cuts down the number of queries and calls received by my team, thus improving their efficiency, but also reduces stress because the team are not constantly dealing with so many frustrated customers. I've shown you the storyboards in the expenses context, and we're now developing storyboards for lots of other areas. So how are we using how to today? Most of these points I've touched on. A key point I want to emphasize is its use in further transitions for us to reduce costs and improve assurance. To give some idea of this, we're currently in the process of transitioning 16 people's worth of work into our Glasgow and Preston offices from a different site. This involves many of our process areas. As part of the data gathering, we're, we have already started documenting the ASIS processes in how to, utilizing the customer's current documentation where, where we can. Prior to commencement of any physical transition, there is a re requirement for all of the process leads who are receiving activities to have signed these documents off. Not only this is this key for my assurance, it's reassuring and gives confidence to my customer FD and also ensures we have complete data at a practical level. We're using how to to support our continuous improvement activity and also looking at how to for more storyboards. In addition to finance services, other areas of shared services are exploring or considering using how-to. We have many change initiatives in shared services where we're seeking to help the company become more efficient. How-to is being actively used and considered by our IT teams and HR teams. It's also being used in other parts of our company, for example, in our pensions investment company and in our maritime sector. Others are certainly seeing its use, usefulness. In the longer term, how to may help us to look into how we join up more end-to-end -end process across our lines of service within shared services. So in conclusion, I'll just focus back on the benefits we have seen in finance services by using the tool and reflect back on whether how to has supported us in the challenge I described at the start. So against our strategic objectives, operational excellence, we achieved our initial cost target of 20% and continue to deliver better than budget cost performance. How to is a key enabler to this. Financial control, our process control and work instruction and documentation has been noted as best practice through audit testing. As we transition further work using how to, using the tool has really helped to identify gaps and issues. In terms of service delivery, I think the storyboards that I've shown you speak for themselves. Common finance activities across the UK. We continue to transition and we now have much more pull from our finance, my finance director colleagues. How to is a critical part of our transitioning methodology. In terms of a better place to work, how to creates clarity and transparency for the teams. I've seen that confidence grow and how to is definitely a contributing factor. So we started with the, challenge, with the finance services challenge of securing customer confidence as we seek to extend the value finance services can bring to our company BA systems. The value finance services can bring is to reduce the cost of finance and improve the resulting level of financial control.
This can only be achieved by ensuring people know what they need to do and can do it effectively with clear understanding. I hope I've demonstrated to you how how to has helped in this journey. From a personal perspective, it gives me confidence to continue the finance services journey in BA Systems and confidence that my team are delivering what we say we're going to do. I'm now going to hand over to Dave Easterbrook from Tipico Nimbus to just pick up maybe one or two points I've made and just add to what I've already said. So, David, over to you. Thanks, David. And I guess, firstly, a very special thank you to you uh, for your excellent and very thorough presentation. Um, I'd, I'd love you to do this every week. <laughs> it was, uh, was, was very engaging. And really, many congratulations and thank you to you and your team for what I see as a truly outstanding achievement created in how to, um, something to be truly proud of. Your story, for me, is, is one of many success stories from our customers. Um, and I must say that I feel very proud when sharing the success of the BAE Systems story and your achievements, uh, and, and as I share that with other customers. In fact, the story is so good that we've captured it on video for everyone to see. And the link on your screen now will be sent to you afterwards. Uh, if you click on that fighter plane, um, there's seven minutes worth of, I think, very engaging video. Um, and for the 46% of people just starting out, I, I highly recommend seeing that and, and looking at the journey again um, and listening to some of the people that actually did the work. Um, so David talked about the speed at which BAE systems were able to document, simplify, improve, standardize, agree, and then deploy process for people in the business. This is clearly a major benefit for companies, saving significant time and cost, and at the same time reducing business risk by getting it right first time. And I think that, that's a huge achievement from, from the team. There's two key phases to get into where they got uh, to really reiterate what David said. And one is, is build your business process architecture end to end, um, top to bottom, of both a manual and automated steps. On your screen now, you can see an example of what an entire business process architecture might look like for an organization. Uh, the arrows drill down into more detail. Box eight probably represents a lot of what the BA systems team has actually done. Um, and and that, that's a key starting point in delivering what BA systems have done. Secondly, deploying the agreed processes to people across the organization uh, and, and using storyboards and landing pages for that. The, the, on, on the next slide, there's uh, an example of what a, a landing page that we quite often develop as part of our accelerated content for customers might look like, where the, the pictures there indicate a storyboard that David referenced to earlier. So if you need to process expenses, we've, we've heard, or if you need to process invoices, you haven't done it for a while, there's a temp in, they can click on there and they can see the step-by-step -step way of doing it. So a very quick way of getting to your training notes or understanding. At the bottom left, there's links to KPIs. So every morning, this could be a landing page for somebody in accounts payable where they come in and they can see immediately how, how they're doing in any, every area that they're trying to monitor. And then on the right bottom there, there's useful links to other parts of the system. Um, and these are all produced very, very easily um, as landing pages. So moving on, customers often feel they don't have time to do this or that this takes too long. And uh, I was interested to hear David's comment there that that was his belief at the start of this journey. You know, why are we using a new tool? This is going to take forever. Um, but BA Systems has proved us, uh, again, has proved that doesn't have to be the case. Um, as did another customer, a customer of ours, uh, who last year uh, went through a major business transformation program, quite a large 18 billion Euro global building materials company. And uh, across their European division, across eight countries, they had a huge journey to go on. And they wanted to manage expectations internally on how, how long it would take. So they went to Gartner to benchmark this. Gartner told them that six to 12 months is really best in class. Well, we've just heard how um, our BAE systems have beaten that as well. Gartner further suggested to this company that it would take them 18 months. They actually achieved it, partnering with Nimbus in four months, with business buying from each of the countries, 
but a detailed process down to the level that people needed to communicate to, and they fully translated all their process diagrams into eight European language, languages, as well as in English. So like the BAE Systems Project, a, a truly amazing achievement in a very short time scale. So I've made some notes going through as David went through his presentation there. Um, I've, I've got seven. I'm supposed to do about four or five, I guess. But I think there's so many successes in what the AE have done. I just want to highlight some of those. The first one, which I think is an absolute key one, is the excellent executive sponsorship that they had in their project um, and their ability to inspire their people to drive their success. And, and that, that's a textbook key critical success factor for any project of this nature. Secondly, overcoming the challenge of standardization in a federated organization um, and having no mandate, incredibly, no mandate for change, but having to win the right and influence people uh, through business case and, um, and, and piloting what, what they were doing. Uh, so an exceptional story. So many companies feel they can't do this. BAE proved you can. The project objectives were business driven uh, and very customer focused. And its success was about engaging with people in the business, hugely key. Managing change and creating a culture of continuous improvement. We've heard about that and how that's rolling out within the organization. The power of process visualization and the creation of a single version of the truth, including linking their financial controls and finance policies to process. The power of storyboards for induction and training of new staff, and to remind people how to do things they might only do infrequently. And lastly, uh, I'm glad we got the mention that BAE Systems needed to partner uh, with somebody. They needed a partner they could work with. And this is was, this was another critical success factor. And the partnership with Nimbus um, and the leveraging of our proven implementation approach tailored specifically to BAE Systems proved very successful. So overall, a great story uh, and a project to be proud of. So thank you again, David. And I'll pass you back to Susie. Thank you, David, and thank you, Dave. So lots of questions. Um, so if I can ask both of you to keep your responses relatively concise, please, so we can get through all of them. Um, I'm going to put this to you, David. Um, what was the impact of other shared services organization programs across BAE, successful or otherwise, on the buy-in and take-up of shared services specifically within finance? Um, I, I think um, it, it was it was really quite extensive. As I said, um, shared services started in 2002. I guess we started this journey in 2008. I think it was a, a lot of the original sort of credibility as to why we went on the finance services journey was down to actually the benefit that other parts of the organisation had seen through um, other areas in shared services. So I think it really sort of helped. Um, People think, well, why haven't we got finance shared services? I'm sure it can bring benefit. Okay, and another question for you, David. For the year-end statutory close processes, how have you been able to keep your clients appraised of progress in the knowledge that the shared services delivers a lot of the action whilst the retained client remains accountable for the outcome and overall risk? Um, I think... Firstly, we have a very sort of clear timetable which we've got transparency and it's different timetables with different customers because we're working across multiple ERP systems, but we make sure that there is clear timetables uh, and I guess there's always a hard milestone point in terms of when we get that data into um, essentially our consolidation system. So we always know everything's driving to that particular date. Um, so I think for me the key is clarity of communication with customers uh, and ensuring that you know those communication lines are always open as we're going through the closed process, whether that, to be honest, at year end or, or, or period end. A question for you, please, Dave. Um, how, in in kind of two or three ways, how does this tool differ from Oracle Tutor? Um, I. I don't know a lot about Oracle Tutor. I'm familiar with the SAP product that was Detango, uh, Oracle's UPK. Um, this links um, manual and automated activities, if you like. I, and, and that's probably one of the most significant things that we do in our approach. Um, and I think in the way that we 
we map, um, you saw some of David's examples there where they, they map inputs and outputs with line text on. Um, we, we have verb and a noun in, in each activity box. And the ability to put those onto a screen in a very visual way and link them and talk people through end to end. I, I don't believe, I, I'm, I used to work for Oracle and uh, it was certainly not the most significant product for this sort of work. Um, I'd say at the time, most of our customers were using Visio um, or products like Aris, but not with huge success. Okay. Um, do you, so back to you, David, please. Do you view the system as a means by which to manage your portfolio of services or a configuration management system or both? Um, I certainly don't use it as a means to manage the portfolio. We have our service catalog, which defines our portfolio. Um, what this product does, or, or how we've used this product, is to ensure that we essentially, within our service catalog, have got everything documented that we need to be documented. So I see this as an enabling technology, which has helped us to get control of what we do, and enable the teams to know what they need to do. So that's how I sort of see the product. Okay, and um, a great question here um, to you, David. How does, uh, or does, how to have the ability to operate dynamically and specifically call out when controls are not being adhered to? Um, so the answer to the question first part of the question is, yes, it operates dynamically in that um, people can interact with it on a continuous basis. In terms of will it actually flag where controls are not being utilized, um, that's probably more one for Dave than me. We haven't deployed it in that way um, at the moment because we have other tool, another tool that was already in place to enable us to do that. So it's not to say that it can't be done, but we don't use it in that way. But Dave probably would have a view. Yeah, it, it, I guess TIBCO Nimbus uh, per se doesn't do that. You know, the, the, the benefit of Nimbus is, is to create your processes visually, agree them with people, create your storyboards. With, with other TIBCO products uh, around workflow, that, that's where we'd link in one of those. So that there's products like TIBCO Formvine and our AMX BPM products that we bring into play for specifics like that. But it's, it, it's a case of two tools to give you the perfect solution in that, in that scenario. Okay, um, so moving on, question back to you please, David. Um, does how to link with your asset register, and if so, how? Um, simple answer is no, it doesn't link with our asset register. Um, at this moment in time. Um, don't think in the way in which we have our service catalog structured, it, it's a link that we require. Um, uh, the, the important thing for us was making sure that our processes, our control points, and our work instructions were, were, all, uh, were all linked together in a really coherent way. Okay, and let's just focus. You talked about running off SAP. How um, can you link how to directly to your ERP? Uh, again, we haven't um, because we don't just run off SAP. We have multiple mm -hmm. ERP systems, not just um, uh, SAP systems. So a key consideration for us was we needed a tool that was capable of supporting us across multiple uh, ERP systems. But again, Dave, um, I, I, perhaps you can yeah. respond to that. that, that you know, question. definitely. The, the short answer is absolutely yes. We, we've got um, integration with SAP Solution Manager that allows us to take the business process master list, list from SAP, bring it into Nimbus in the same way that in, in a statement set, which is the same way that um, the AE systems use their financial control policies. And then you can attach an individual um, link to an activity itself and launch it from a storyboard. So, uh, and you can do that with, with any other system with, with um, a URL link. So absolutely with SAP, yes we can. Okay, and uh, a question for you Dave. Um, do you have a representative in Mexico? In Mexico, um, oh. I think can, we have can a you partner. Take on Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. can take that offline, I, I think, in short. But yes, we've, um, we, we, we can certainly 
help people out in Mexico, yeah. Okay, perfect. Final question um, for you, I think, Dave. Um, do you partner the how-to product with, or maybe it's a combination of David and Dave, do you partner the how-to product with a standard service management methodology such as ITIL, or is how-to viewed as a methodology itself? Shall I answer that, David? Um, we, we've yeah. actually got an ex accelerator with Matt. Um, we've Matt ITIL, ITIL, um, and the process. Um, we've Matt uh, Prince to project management as well as a process. Um, and we've got ERP methodology as a process map. So the short answer is yes, um, but you can use Nimbus to map any, any process, any methodology. It's, it's a great visual tool for, for doing that. Um, and then we export out to Microsoft Project if that's relevant as well to produce project plans. Okay, good, perfect. We are out of time. So uh, David and Dave, thank you so much. That was a really useful um, story that was shared there and I'm sure will inspire many people connected. Uh, just to wrap up, you've got on your screen contact details should you want further information from TIBCO Nimbus. Also, um, we shared services.com uh, did a study with TIPCO Nimbus in the last few months and uh, please download that infographic report from our website sharedservicesLink.com and also we've got uh, a number of exciting webinars coming up over the next couple of months. Uh, feel free to go onto our website and download more reports and podcasts and um, TIPCO Nimbus is nearly always at our events so if you wanted to meet them at one of our events coming up you can see we've got conferences coming up. So we look forward to welcoming you next time. Goodbye.